How's it going guys? In this video I want to share with you a very very important book. Um, this book is sold over 15 million copies and um, it's done a lot of positive impact to many people around the world and um, I'm actually really excited to share with you this book. Um, this book has actually changed my, my life as well. I read this book about 10 years ago and uh, it just it was actually it was actually one of the um, first books I actually picked up like and I mean it was actually one of the first books I actually picked up and just started reading and uh, back then I wasn't really much of a reader and um, when I saw this book I saw it promoted everywhere and it was highly recognized and um, and yeah I, this was the pretty much the first book that I read and just went from cover to cover so so the book is called The Seventh Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. If you haven't read this book, you've got to read this book. Um, this book is, this goes deep. Um, Stephen Covey, I did a bit of background research. Um, he's actually a Scorpio, so as you know, Scorpios are pretty deep guys. And uh, yeah, this one goes deep into yourself and you learn a lot about yourself. It's, it's very introspective. And uh, and I personally believe that when you work a lot about your when you work on yourself when you go within yourself and see um, who you are what you're made of and your demons your fears and all those type of things you, you build this inner confidence this inner conviction that you just project outwards into the world so um, this book will actually help you in um, understanding a lot about yourself and actually improving your interpersonal relationships as well so um, this is the book you got to pick up this book and read it so let's get straight into the uh, the contents of this book and a few takeaways I'd like to share with you so um, on the very first page uh, I would like to share with you this um, this part I actually all, I've always remembered um, I've always remembered this this page for, from the book um, and it's always stayed with me for, for all these years but to, to give an example on on, um, on the effects of understanding about how to be more effective and and the importance of understanding people and, and how to communicate is he starts off with with this picture there so you might have seen this I'm not too sure whether you've seen this or not but you might have seen this online or, or whatever but if you look at the picture I mean what do you see first honestly what do you see so the majority of people they might see the picture of a woman right you might see a picture of a, a young woman just looking away um, from you know from from where you're looking at so she's just looking away but if you look carefully you might see a picture of an old lady so uh, to help you understand to help you see this old lady let's just flick forward so if we go to if we just change it slightly this is a this is one that's a bit more effective so can you see the old lady now you can see that that's a nose and that's a mouth and uh, that's a rise and everything so and but you can also see the the young lady as well that's like her cheek there that she's looking away so what does Stephen Covey mean by this what does he mean by by showing you this picture well what it means is people see things the way they see things people have their own perspective people have their own opinions their own views and they come from different backgrounds and and that's 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 all it is some people see the young lady some people see the old lady and you, it's really important to see things through that perspective you need to see through through the eyes of other people and that's how relationships build that's how you come to understand it, um, each other a lot more effectively and uh, that's how you know you have more deep and meaningful relationships um, one of the needs for people is you need love and connection we all want that deep love and connection with someone and with people as well and in order to achieve that we need to understand what people are going through we need to see life through their eyes so to speak so some people might see the old lady some people might see the the young lady as well so um, so Stephen Covey he goes straight into the seven habits right so it looks something like this I know it looks a bit technical but um, he's got he covers interdependence he covers independence and then finally he covers dependence as well and um, let's start with the, de the dependence so he's got um, being proactive and I'll get into these ones a bit later on and begin with the end in mind the next one is put put first things first and then you move to next level which is think win-win and then you've got synergize right and then you've also got seek first to understand and then to be understood 
the first three, the first three habits, uh, Stephen, Covey, uh, Stephen Covey talks about uh, private victory. So this is all about delving within yourself and achieving meaningful goals, right? So um, the first part is being proactive. You need to always be, have a proactive type of approach to life. A, a key takeaway in this, the first three uh, habits is begin with the end in mind. So what does he mean by begin with the end in mind is he starts off with the story of you're walking down a, hall, a hallway and uh, you know it's a dark hallway and then as you open the door you, you enter a room and then you see a lot of people crying and everything and then you see a coffin and then as you approach that coffin you open it up and then you see yourself so that's you lying there and as you, you're, you're seeing yourself lying there you look at the eulogy that's being read what's written on that eulogy you know so I know it gets really deep and it's something that we don't really want to think about but that's essentially what is going to happen to each and every one of us is that we will all die so what Stephen Covey is talking about what Stephen Covey is talking about is you want to begin with the end in mind so whatever you've written down in um, in that eulogy is essentially what life you want to live that's the life that you want to live and the choices that you make right now should really lead up to that um, should really lead up to the end in mind so that's what Stephen Covey is talking about he wants you to to focus on the end and um, for, for example I mean I, I personally I believe we can learn a lot from from death we can learn so much from it and you can unpack so much wisdom from it because whenever you're coming across a problem a, a fear or some a challenge in life um, it might seem like the end of the world and, and your whole life is going to change and you're fearful and there's all these type of things that's going to happen but one way to tackle um, this change is you need to recognize that one day you will die, right? So if one day you will die, then all those things that you're worried about is going to go eventually. Let's project for 2,000 years into the future. What's going to happen 2,000 years in the future? Well, everything you know, every one that you know is going to be gone. Technology that I'm using right now is going to be all obsolete. Everything that you know is going to be all gone. So it's important to keep that in perspective is to begin with the end in mind. Um, what is the type of life that you wanted to live? And then you go backwards and then you try and work on achieving that end in mind goal. So by uncovering this one thing, um, how you want to live, um, when you know the, the life that you truly want to live, that's when you decide to make changes and then you start to do the things that's you know leading towards the end in, life, uh, end in mind. What Stephen Covey talks about this one is putting First things first, putting first things first. Uh, what Stephen Covey is uh, teaching in this section is um, it's important to identify what's the most important things that's happening in your life, the, the, the top priorities. Now, we, are, we all have the same amount of hours in a day. We don't know what's going to happen and we're all given the same amount of hours and it's up to us to decide how we're going to use those hours. So he gives a really great example of, let's say that you have a jar, right? You've got a jar, an empty jar, and um, you go ahead and you try and fill up the jar, right? And you've got these different, you've got these different um, sizes of sand and, and rocks in front of you. So you, first of all, you've got the sand, and then you've got the small pebbles, and you've got the big rocks. Um, what happens, is, let's say that I want to try and fill up the jar by pouring in all the sand, right? So I take all the sand and I pour it all into the jar, and the jar goes right to the top. Okay, next I want to try and put in the pebbles. Yeah, you might be able to get a few pebbles. And then next you try and put in the big rocks. It's not going to go into the, the jar because there's just no room because the, the jar is already filled up. So what Stephen Covey is talking about is the big rocks in your life are the most important things that's in your life. So it could be love. You know, love is a very important need that we have in our lives. If we tend to ignore it, if we want to ignore it and everything like that, well, you know, it's, yeah, we're going to live like a, a, lo a loveless life, I guess, and we're going to be miserable and, and un unhappy. So what Stephen Covey is talking about is we need to isolate the big rocks. We, we work with the big rocks first, and then we work backwards. So uh, going back to the jar, um, going back to the jar example, let's say you got the empty, empty jar. If we were to get those big rocks and put them into the jar, we can easily do that. It's going to fit, right? Next up, we put in the, the small pebbles, right? So we start putting in all the small pebbles and it can fill in all those small gaps. And now you take the sand and then you pour in all the sand and it'll just fill in all the gaps and now your jar is full. So what you do is, uh, what, what, does it, what does those rocks represent? The big rocks represent the most important things in your life. 
So it could be education, it could be commitment, it could be marriage. Those are the those are the big rocks that's happening in your life. He goes about these in, de in more detail. The small pebbles are, you know, it could be the projects, the project sets that you're working on and so forth. Um, that's like secondary to your big rocks. And then finally, um, the grains of sand, those are the small little insignificant things that's not really important, right? Those are the things that you just don't worry about it. You just, uh, it just gets filled up anyway. And uh, yeah, the, those are the things you don't really need to worry about. They can be done, but then you know, at the end, they don't really make your life full. So um, that's a really great example of, of that section there. So the next section is, um, he, he goes on and he talks about public victory. So when we move away from um, private victory, we, we move towards a public victory. So we've built a very strong foundation about ourselves and then we move on to public victory. Um, one of the key takeaways is uh, seek first to understand, then to be understood. So what a lot of people tend to do is they tend to just, you know, just, um, they don't really listen with the intent to understand. They just listen to the intent to just to reply back with an answer. And this is a big problem because if you don't listen to other people, then they're not going to tell you, you're not going to learn the things that you need to learn that will help you achieve that synergistic communication with each other. So what Stephen Covey is talking about is um, before you say anything, always trying to listen emphatically with the other person. Try to, you know, try and understand where they're coming from first. Just to see their point of view. And then once you see the point of view and all you have to do is just acknowledge it just to listen to it. And then you try and convey how you want to be understood. So that's a really important part of, of um, communication. Uh, I've been in many situations where um, I've worked in corporate where, you know, there's people who just don't listen. You know, they just don't listen. And uh, as soon as you say something, they just pull out the phone and start like reading and stuff like that. So as soon as that happens, it just destroys the, the trust and the relationship with you and the other person. So therefore, automatically you think, this person doesn't care about what I have to say. Why should I listen to this person? Why should I care about this other person? So therefore, we both go into different directions. There's no synergy. We can't work together, and it's all completely destroyed. So the best gift you can give to someone is to really pay attention to someone. Uh, turn off your phone. You know, put your phone away. Um, look at them in the eye, and, and you know, just just be genuine and sincerely listen to them, and you're giving them a gift. Um, there's another great book which is there's another great book which is um, uh, what is it the men are from Mars and women from Venus and it's a really great example on how um, women when you you need to really listen to women as men we, we tend to just you know want to try and fix things and everything but women um, when they're speaking you need to actually just listen to them and really really care about what they're talking about you don't have to give them a, a solution as guys we always want to try and do so when she comes home from work and she starts telling you all of the problems, don't just try and fix her problems and stuff like that. Just listen to her and that's all she wants to do is just for you to listen to her. Uh, and as guys, we don't recognize this. We need to really understand that, you know, we have to listen to them and that's how we fix things, right? Just listen to them and then that's it. So that, that, that's a pretty interesting one. Um, another part is think win-win. So what Stephen Covey is talking about is we want to look for ways in which both sides win and then it doesn't have to be a win-lose type of situation. It's always being win-win. And then uh, finally he talks about syner synergize. So synergize is when you reach a point where you completely understand the other person so well. You're, you're, it's like a, an intimate deep connection with the other person. There is no need for ex explanation. Um, you reach a point in the relationship where there is no need to, to explain yourself or you need to, to demonstrate anything because you have such a, an acceptance and understanding of each other. You don't even need to even communicate that much as well because you just understand what, what, um, you know, what, 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 what the behaviors are. You, you just understand what they're doing. Uh, I'm thinking back, I've got a few friends in my life where uh, I'm very fortunate to have them and they've seen me go through so many things and I've seen them go through so many things and we've experienced a lot together we have this really deep connection and uh, we can go through days maybe weeks or months without talking to each other and then we, if, if we speak to each other on Facebook or on the phone um, we, we we just it's like we, we haven't lost anything it's like we haven't lost anything so 
um, it's just reached that level in the relationship where we just we just understand each other so much that we don't need to say that much like she would, she would just say to me oh yeah I just did blah 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 and oh yeah, that's great and then we'll just you know go ahead but we, we just we just have that vibration where we just understand each other so there is no need to uh, show demonstrate this or, or, or explain myself because she'll understand me and I'll understand where she's coming from so it's it's very if you ever if you haven't experienced that yet um, try it you know try and uh, I hope I hope you get to that level where you, you experience that with someone where you just know each other so well and you're just aware and um, there's no need to you know explain yourself you have that deep connection so that's that's very important and uh, and finally another key takeaway in um, the seven habits of highly effective people is sharpen the saw so the analogy behind sharpen the saw is um, we tend to go through life like we're ch chopping down the forest right we're inside the forest we're just chopping down trees chopping down trees and but we don't know where we're heading we don't know where where we're going in any, everything but if we if we zoom out from a bird's uh, eye view we need to see where we're going now in order for us to do that we need to sharpen the saw it takes a long time to um you know to to focus and to pour your energy into projects and and to do all these type of things so there needs to be a time in your life or in, in an, an hour in the week where you need to sharpen the saw, where you need to reflect and uh, think about where you're going. I personally have been doing this for years and I've been sharpening the saw every Sunday. That's my ritual. So what I do is every Sunday I go down to a cafe, sit down and have a coffee and then I start planning out my week, my, my months and just analyzing my, my goals. So, um, so that's what I tend to do with the sharpen the saw is I tend to reflect and then I rebuild myself. So anyway, um, this is a great book. You've got to read it. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Go check it out. You'll really love it. And uh, I really hope that you get a lot from it. So uh, this is one of the best books ever written. One of the most influential ones. So go check it out. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.